so hi, hi everyone. Uh, Dan Rope here on Typical Data Science team. I'm going to talk to you about a couple things today. One is uh, AutoML, and secondly, a data function for the Team Studio product in Typical Data Science. Both of these are actually available on the community exchange as components that we've done as extensions uh, for those products. So the first one I'm going to go in a bit more depth in is oops, is the uh, is AutoML. So let's let's talk about AutoML first. So First of all, what is AutoML? Uh, essentially, what it is, it's the automation and optimization of common steps that are used to train up a machine learning model. And so there's a lot of benefits for that. And we think that, you know, from our point of view, there's benefits both to a data scientist and also to a citizen data scientist. For a data scientists, you know, sometimes it can just be a lot more productive, a lot faster to get started if you've got something on the screen to then edit, as opposed to starting from a blank canvas. And so that really improves productivity by automating some of these common steps as well. And oftentimes there's a lot of like, you know, grunge work, if you will, that need to be done. And so having that, that part of it done for you uh, can really speed the process up a bit. It also allows you to try maybe some feature engineering techniques that you haven't checked out yet or some different algorithms and so forth. It gives you a chance to easily, uh, pr you know, pursue those. For a citizen data scientist, really what it does, it kind of helps you really get started a lot faster with these things, with feature engineering and, and machine learning a lot faster. And the way we've done it, we feel, is it gives you some guidance on some practice. We're building into our techniques and how we do it, and you can sort of learn from that and observe how that process actually happens, and then learn a little bit more about the details of a machine learning process. It allows you to actually rapidly try out different models as well. So you can try different things really quickly, just try different models, see how well they're doing, and quickly see what, uh, you know, where, where you might be locking onto something that, that could be valuable. And so that allows you to quickly explore a, a wider range of, of use cases as well. So what we view AutoML actually is down to the characteristics of the algorithm itself. So we, there's three main characteristics. One is it automatically generates features from the data using techniques that are commonly used by data scientists. So that'll generate transformations of data that are fed into those predictive models. Secondly, it automatically selects a, set, a candidate set of predictors for your target variable for you. And then finally, it automatically executes across a wide variety of algorithms, each of which has a different set of parameters, ultimately coming across, a, ultimately training up several models from which we pick an overall winner that you can then use and deploy, the best performing model, if you will. So the goals of this project that we've been working on is first of all, transparency. So we want to provide visibility into the process, something that you can inspect and interrogate and see what actually happened. That allows you to not, not only learn, but also modify it as well to suit your needs. So you can actually edit what was done by our automated processes. And so we feel that can open up a collaboration across an expert data scientist and a citizen data scientist working together to, to achieve the goal of coming up with a, a good model. Second is scalability. So we're building on top of our Team Studio product. And that's been designed from the ground up, as, as most people know, to, be, to work in cluster, in database, you know, across Spark and so forth, and at scale. And so we feel starting with a framework like that makes a lot of sense for something like AutoML, because you can imagine there's a lot of different routines and all these things happening in parallel. We gain a lot of efficiencies by having a platform that's designed for that. And then ultimately where we want to go is, is add an ability to understand these models as well. So visual explanations, um, interpretability, like did this model actually lock onto something that I'm expecting it to? You know, what's, what's the explainability? How do I understand the characteristics, the behaviors of what it's actually predicting? So that's something for the future for us. So what we have is for, that's available today is we're starting with a foundation. So the nice thing about the Team Studio product is it's very extensible. And so we've, we've taken advantage of that fact to be able to add in these new features. So we've added things, we use uh, uh, existing things like feature engineering that's, that's already in the product, but we also added some new ones as well. And those are available for use in AutoML, but also you can just use them directly if you want to. So we've added in feature engineering, we've added in uh, some techniques for variable selection and as well, and also the automated model selection. So those are all new operators that we've included in our AutoML package. But then around that, we've got another operator that actually orchestrates that entire process. So it'll actually analyze the data and assemble these workflows for you, ready to run. And so that workflow is fully parameterized. You really just need to, to uh, pick a target variable and, and go. So the main differentiation we feel here is that this is a really, we've been calling this kind of a Lego blocks approach versus black box. You can actually see the pieces 
that go into the process and you can actually look at them and adjust them as well. So it leads to an editable workflow that you can refine and optimize uh, for your needs. And of course, everything is running at scale and in database. So I'm gonna give you a quick demo here of what it looks like. So the first thing I'll start off for contrast here is this is manual ML, if you will. So this is a workflow in the Team Studio product for addressing a machine learning pro problem. In this case, we're trying to predict whether or not uh, a case, a fraudulent transaction has happened in, for an insurance data set. So typically we start off here where we got our fraud data set, our cases for fraud, we've got our customer database, wanna combine those, and then we feel that income's gonna be something important, so we're gonna join that in there as well by using zip code as, a, as kind of a proxy. And then you can see we kind of start the process here where we start determining like what are, what are ways to transform those variables so we can have better predictive power out of those for our model. And so we have a few steps that we do that. We bucket categorical variables. We, you know, we do things like we normalize the, the features. Um, we get rid of no uh, some no, no value replacement doing imputation and so forth to get to the data set that we want to use to do our, pr our predictions for a target variable. Then we do a train test split. So we have that holdout data set so we can evaluate our model. And we train up over, under a number of different algorithms. And finally, we compare all those to get an overall result. And we can see, you know, in this case here, you know, as a confusion matrix for each one of these models, we see we got up uh, about an 81% model for the one that was determined manually here to be the best. Okay, so that, that, that's a, a manual process approach to, uh, to, to machine learning, something that's been supported in the product, you know, for, for forever, really. Contrast that to our automated machine learning, or AutoML. We still, of course, want to join the data sets that we think are relevant for doing our predictions. But here, we have an orchestrator node that's actually going to perform the predictions for us. So we just drag this node into the canvas, hook it up to our data set, and then all we really need to do is select the column in that data set, in this case, whether a transaction was fraudulent or not, that we actually want to build a predictive model for. That's really all you need to do, and then you can run it, and it'll build those models for you. There's another parameter here as well, which you can adjust. And this is essentially a, a, a model performance versus a speed of computation trade-off. So we'll adjust the parameters so we can get a quicker model that might not be as good if you want to get something quick versus a, a deeper model that might take a longer time but give you more accuracy. So when you run that, it, you know, it could take me about 25, 30 minutes, depending on the size of the data set. It could take longer than that. Um, and when it's done, what you see on the bottom is the results. So these are sort of a tab set of results here that says the results of what happened. And so one of the things that's probably most interesting to look at is the leaderboard. So you can see these several models were, were actually built here and the one on top here has the metrics here that had the overall top accuracy. So around 77, 78% here. So it's getting kind of close to our, our, the one that was done in, in, in the manual uh, process. You can also look at the information about the top model. You can see what were the variables that were used, what were the parameters that were used for that specific model. And then you can also look at the variable importances. So for the, the top variables that were important for that, for that prediction, you can see what those variables were. And you can tell by the names a little bit here and what the transformations that were actually done to those variables to, 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 to result in that model. Now, how did this actually happen? So what happened was behind the scenes, is this actually generated several workflows on your behalf and then executed those to come up with the overall winning model strategy. And so I can show you some of those workflows here. So these, all of these, these were not created by a person. These were created by the machine, if you will. Um, but I'll just kind of give you a quick sense as to what each one of them does. So first off, we have a bit here on, on data preparation and cleaning. So we've taken the liberty to go through some of the variables and, and take care of some common issues with data prep and cleaning to make sure the values are gonna be uh, able to be processed uh, by the process. Um, we, we look at the, the target variable, ensure that it's, it's encoded properly, um, and do some null value uh, uh, imputation of missing values and so forth on the data itself. And then we also do the train test split for value, the train test split for you, and then also we get some metrics off of that training set that we're gonna use to determine future, some of these uh, subsequent flows. So if we go into the feature engineering flow here, and I'll open this one up. So in this case here, we've got our training set, we've got our testing set coming down in the pipeline. And on the training set, we're going to you know, determine what are the variables that actually be useful for prediction. So something like an entirely all the same value for a column, that's useless. We're gonna to toss that one out. We're gonna do some imputation on the missing data for the predictors, normalization, and other feature engineering as well. These robot icons, these are the ones that we've added as part of 
as AutoML as new feature engineering techniques that you can use either on your own or they're used also in the AutoML process. Generally, they, they are for dealing with categorical variables. So these are ways of transforming categorical variables into numeric values to increase the predictive power ultimately downstream uh, in the modeling technique. Now, we also have rules that are done behind the scenes as part of the process to determine what the feature engineering strategy should be. And so there's, these are based on things like the distribution of the, of the categories, based on things like um, uh, also the cardinality, like how many unique values and so forth. And in t sometimes there's, there's clear things to do and sometimes there's, there's not. When there's clear things to do, we'll arrange the nodes automatically for you. When there's not, we'll actually do different strategies and allow the modeling to sort of sort it out down, downstream in the process. So that's why you see these different feature engineering strategies here as well. So the next step is feature selection. And for this, again, we've added um, stability selection as a technique that you can, again, use on your own or as part of the AutoML process. And essentially what this is doing is there are some modeling techniques built into these nodes that take subsets of the data and we chose models that, are, that specifically turn out some variable importances. And so we use the results of those variable importances for the subsets of the data to recommend candidate variables for prediction for the models that will ultimately be training in the next step. And then finally, the modeling step itself. So here, we now would collect all of those feature engineering strategies, all of those candidate variables we want to use for predictions, and we run those across all of the candidate algorithms that we're going to use to train up models. So in this case, we have a random forest, we have gradient boosted trees, and a logistic regression. Now, each one of those is not just one model, they run across a, a span of parameters, hyperparameters, if you will, to, uh, to produce several models, each of which is evaluated against that holdout data set. And then for each one of those, we actually do retain the winning model for each one of those, which you can use. If you, so if you, don't, use, if you don't want to use the one that we found to be the overall winner, winner, you can go find the one that was actually one of these other ones as well. So those are actually also retained. And then finally, we do an ultimate overall comparison across every algorithm, across every model that was generated to come up with that leaderboard that I was showing earlier um, in, in, the, in the results. And so what that is, is that's what this, these algorithms are saying, like, this is like the best model that I can actually produce for you. You know, I've tried all these feature engineering techniques, these different algorithms. This is the best predictive model for that data and that target variable. So, um, Okay, so the um, last thing I'll say is now, if sometimes you might actually want to modify that process. So if we look at the, you know, the results of our, of our original model, you might detect you know, there's a fraud case, it might be some imbalance. And so, so maybe you, know, you might want to take some adjustment techniques to actually you know, resample some of that data uh, so that you've got a more, a more even distribution. Um, you can actually do that by actually going into the, oops, sorry, it's this one here. Oh, no, this one here. You can actually go into the flows that were generated themselves. And in here, I've actually upsampled the data to try to correct some of that imbalance for the target. So, you know, fraud is a rare case. So we want to upsample so we have a more even distribution and then send that down to the rest of the models as well. And so you can actually edit that flow and then you can go back and just rerun from here. And then when that completes, you can see your results and go back to the leaderboard and compare. And then you may not remember from the last time, but essentially we've got uh, a little bit some other, other some of these other metrics here that are, are looking at those kinds of issues are, are a bit improved by by taking that action. So again, the main point is here: these are um, it's an orchestrator for AutoML automatically generating workflows for you. Um, it allows you to then modify those to adjust them to your needs and ultimately get the model that you might want to get for deployment. Okay. Okay, so that is essentially uh, what we have for AutoML. Um, I, I think I forgot to mention before, with this also being done through the TIPCO Labs program, this is a, an innovation program that we engage with customers on projects like this, so you can become involved and you can help us work more towards like what you know what the future of this could be. So you know we we you know that's opened up to you know certain customers to help us sort of guide the future in this. Okay, I also want to mention the on a different topic, this is a new data function that we've 
built for the, the and put on the component exchange for Team Studio. Uh, essentially, what it is is it's, a, it's those of you that use Spotfire know what a data function is. This is a data function for using the Team Studio product. Team Studio is the product that I was showing for AutoML. This is a data function you can use from Spotfire to run your workflows in Team Studio. And it does support customization of those workflows. Team Studio can expose workflow parameters, and you can control those from, um, from, your, from Spotfire and specify what those, those values are. And essentially, the way this has worked, this is designed for kind of a big data problem. So both Spotfire uses its big data features, talking to remotely to like a large data source, and Team Studio does as well. And so Team Studio processes the data, and then Spotfire is executing remote calls to get aggregations and so forth for your visualizations. And importantly, this supports long-running workflow executions. This is big data, after all. It could take a long time. You might set something off and go to lunch and come back. You can even shut down Spotfire, uh, come back, fire Spotfire up, and it'll pick up right where you left off and notify when these workflows have completed and populate those visualizations. You can, you can do your visualizations from directly from the source, and you can also take some of the results that are done in Team Studio and bring those as data tables directly into Spotfire that you can use for your visualizations. And again, this is available today on the TIPCO Community Exchange. 